victim is now the perpetrator and the perpetrator is now the victim. Mm -hmm. And that just drives me um, crazy. Hi, uh, I'm Nat Wood. I had to take a moment to think about that, but I'm Nat Wood. You're watching 30 frames a second. And uh, today is, um, uh, we're going to be political. Uh, we're always political, but as you know, uh, the elections are coming up, and it is my privilege to have with me three members of the Green Party who are running um, citywide. We have uh, Tony uh, Tony Agronowitz. Uh, okay, what he said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Tony uh, Grenowitz. Yes. Uh, um, he's running for the mayor. We have um, uh, James Lane. He's running for public advocate, and we have uh, Julia Willebrand, who's running for the um, uh, the money position, the controller's office. And we're going to pick their brain about uh, what the Green Party is, what it represents, what's different from other parties, and what, they sp what their agendas are specifically for the offices that they're running for. With that, um, let me put my glasses back on so I can see. Um, uh, Tony, you're running for mayor. That's right. Of your reign of Michael Bloomberg, the richest mayor in history. Um, Art, culture, unless it's a re retread of Broadway, uh, has been destroyed. Uh, there is no music. Uh, Chico Hamilton, the great jazz drummer, said on Leonard Lopate that in the, eight, in the 1950s in L.A., every public high school in Los Angeles had a music teacher, at least one, and every student had to play an instrument which was provided by the schools. And we have the current mayor, I think the most destructive mayor in the city's history since Fr Fernando Wood um, in the late 1850s, certainly the most destructive mayor when it comes to the public and public education, famously said on December 1st, 2011 at MIT, um, of course you can all find this on your thingamajigs uh, instantly, that he would be comfortable with a classroom size of 70, seven Oh, you can look this up. Uh, he's destroyed public education. He tried to destroy the teachers' union. He should be in jail, frankly, for the stuff that he's done in, to this city, the crimes that he's committed. Now, uh, what makes the agenda for the Green Party different from, like, the Democrat Party or the Republican Party or, you know, what is, what, is the, what is the difference in what you represent as opposed to other parties? Well, we're an independent party, so mm -hmm. we're independent of Wall Street and the real estate interests. We also are very concerned about climate change and what's happening to our environment, especially in the city of New York, where the officials were ill-prepared when Sandy came, mm -hmm. for one example. And it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. So we believe in linking environmental and social justice together. You cannot separate the two. For instance, in the Bronx, the poorest urban county in the nation, it has the most toxic waste dumps in New York City. Uh, it's used as a dumping ground for the other boroughs. That has got to stop. And we have a plan, well, I have a plan for jobs. Um, back in the 1930s, Harry Van Arsdale, who <coughs> was the head of the Central Labor Council, proposed a 30-hour week with full benefits. We would go after those employers that are not paying adequate wage, and certainly the minimum wage should be <coughs> expanded to $15. In Washington, I think they're upping it to uh, Washington State. They're upping it to $11. There's no reason why this very rich city with all these rich people who have been the beneficiaries of most 90% of the income increase shouldn't pay their fair share as they were in the 1970s. We can finance this very easily by restoring the stock transfer tax, which was in effect from 1905 to 1980. It is still being collected, but it's being rebated back. But of course, Julia would be the expert on that. But that's $16 billion a year. We need to have pre-K. There's an article for all students in today's New York Times, the front page, <coughs> stating that it's very important for brain development, for pedagogical reasons, for all sorts of reasons, that every student in New York City, every child in New York City, have preschool 
because the earliest years are the most important and formative when it comes to learning. There's so many issues. It's not just affordable housing, it's income-based housing. The stock market is, is, a re is at a record, and homelessness is at a record. This is an absolute international disgrace. Let, let me interrupt you for um, a second, because you've mentioned the stock market a few times. And it, uh, it has been um, reinforced over and over and over and over again that Wall Street contributes mightily to um, the financial stability of the city of New York. Um, uh, it is also no secret that uh, the real estate industry, the, the, the real estate conglomerates, have, have a tremendous hold upon the politics in this city. Um, how do you resolve the issue of uh, our incestuous relationship with Wall Street, how that pertains to people on the street? I mean, how will you, how will you deal with these two diametrically opposed uh, phenomenons, the people and the monarchy? I'm a political candidate for the Green Party for the sixth time. I have run for State Senate, State Assembly, New York City Mayor, twice for New York State Comptroller, and now for New York City Comptroller. What I learned that the two parties in New York State, and probably in the rest of the country, have set up a nice neat duopoly. That way one party can introduce legislation that its uh, supporters want, and the other party will vote it down, and vice versa. And they will both only agree on things that the banksters and the developers and the rest of the corporatocracy want to happen. Yeah. So, <laughs> there, it, prop, the first proposition of the six propositions that are on the ballot, two weeks from now you'll all be voting on them, is, proposition one is a proposition to approve seven more casinos in New York State. Now casinos are uh, an nice. invitation for addiction and generally supported by, the, by the, the poorest and the lowest paid people in the state. And so he wants to have seven more of them approved. And the law requires that a proposition be uh, phrased in neutral terms. And when they polled and found out that a neutral term phrased proposition approving casinos wouldn't get passed, he had the Board of Elections change the wording of the proposition to say that this proposition will create jobs and improve the economy of the state. It's, it's illegal to do that. It's supposed to be a neutral term, but a uh, New York State judge, they're also elected by their two parties, uh, dismissed the case. Uh, how, would you, how would you address some of these issues? What is the, what is the Can official? Can I on this Sure, one? sure, okay. sure. You're the uh, money woman. <laughs> I'm the money woman. Uh, and I'm also very active in Occupy Wall Street, the alternative oh, banking excellent. group. Excellent. So, excellent. Uh, uh, how would we, well, we start with a mun municipal bank. The, the only sit state in the country that has a state bank is North Dakota. North Dakota is the only state in the country that doesn't have a deficit. A municipal bank would be the beginnings of the mm -hmm. process of dealing with the banksters. Because you can't even talk about, about uh, just developers. The developers, bankers, finance, Wall Street, <coughs> it's all the same. They are not, well, the developers are doing something else. They're, 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 the rest of the finance world is doing nothing other than gambling with our money. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they're not producing anything other than more money for themselves. So what do you do about that? Well, obviously, as Tony said, you, you stop rebating the transfer tax that's being collected now and put it into the, the budget and uh, start feeding that through. And then the $70 billion New York City budget, all of that money gets fed into the budget and out of the budget through commercial banks. And thanks. So, so you stop doing that, and you um, just imagine seventy billion dollars is seventy thousand million dollars. Right. Even if Chase and et cetera, et cetera, are taking one percent off the top, and you know they're they're taking fees and so forth and so on, one percent of seventy million, uh, seventy thousand million dollars right. is. And Chase yeah. just had to pay a $13 billion fine for all the uh, crooked activities well, that they've one engaged in. One of the multiple. So, so anyway, this is a place you start. You start right at the heart of it. Then the next thing is developers. Um, well, Barclays well, Bank before you got do that, Before you do that, dollars. I just want to, yeah, um, sure. because um, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you're dealing with, with, with 
you know, novices, you know. Yeah. So when you talk about um, um, negating the rebate for the stock transfer tax, mm -hmm. first of all, what is the stock transfer tax? Uh, are they taxing uh, stock market uh, transactions and then re um, giving them back the money? Yes. That they, okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. And, I just want to make sure that I understand. Which they did not do for 75 yes. years. Yeah. Okay. And, and, wow. for, and there are 13 <coughs> European countries that have a token tax, which is essentially the same thing. The, the token tax also um, taxes a very tiny, minuscule tax, a quarter of 1%, I think, on the on currency exchanges because it's a huge market. Again, it's a gambling market. I'll buy euros uh, on the hopes that it will go up and I'll make a little money and then I'll sell it and so forth and so on. So it's all a, a, a game that produces nothing of use right. for, the, for any, any human being. And, and that game can be attacked at its heart by something very simple. Uh, that will reduce the one second transfer things that they, that literally, they, they, they make transfers uh, every second. Right, uh, it, right, right. Th that right, should tell right. you that obviously this is a gambling game. It's right. nothing to do with producing anything useful. So if they have to start paying some small percent tax on every transfer, it would eliminate all those transfers where they're making a tiny percent, but they're making it every second. They'd well, be losing how, it. How do you, how do you answer uh, those people who who keep telling, who keep saying over and over and over and over again that if you ask them for a nickel, they're going to take the casino and leave the city <laughs> and let, 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 let me give you a good, right, let, let uh, me give you a good example about how, how I mean, silly that is. Right. Uh, They're liars. Yes, ten, ten years ago, more or less, I ran for mayor of New York City on the Green Party line. And at that time, it was prior to 9-11 and prior to all the crashes. And the the... The controller at the time, Alan Hevesy, and, and the rest of the city elite had agreed that Merrill Lynch at that time was entitled to a $400 million or something bond because they wanted a new house. Mm -hmm. right. And the reason they gave for why they had to do that was if they didn't do that, Merrill Lynch would leave. Well, Merrill Lynch did leave, but how did he leave? They, they, they were bankrupted. Right. Or they, right. they bankrupted themselves by gambling, right? right? So the point being that this is just saying that Wall Street is going to leave if you tax it one quarter of one percent on its transactions. Come on. That's, but they paid that's, it for 75 years nonsense. through the Depression. Right. No. This is a false statement. I say look at the record, not the rhetoric. Always look at the record. And if you look at the record, of these guys who are running for office on the two major parties. They have no record when it comes to housing. Take de Blasio. When he was city council person <clears throat> from the district in Fort Greene where they built the Barclays Center, he approved of that construction. Now, he then became public advocate, which he did nothing. Right. But the point <laughs> is, when he approved of that construction, Bruce Ratner the kingpin of this project, threw him a 50th birthday party. The promise was made at the time, and you can check the record, always check the record, that there will be housing built, affordable housing. I prefer income-based housing. To, no, date, that's more specific. to date, not a single unit. They're just holes in the ground. The Barclay Center's been up over a year. It is so lucrative, it is more lucrative than other, any other venue of its sort in the country. And the people who were moved out of their neighborhoods using eminent domain are screwed. Now, as mayor, I would use eminent domain as Gail McLaughlin, the green mayor of Richmond, California, featured in the New York Times a few months ago does. Whenever a house is about to go underwater because the person can't pay because the bank has chiseled them and ripped them off, she takes over the house and forces the bank to renegotiate the loan. So I would use eminent domain that way. I would use the police department not to stop and frisk, not to intimidate my students at the borough of Manhattan Community College who are African and Latino, who suffer the, this kind of abuse from the police department. They can't learn. They can't take a test. There have been five million stop and frisks on this mayor who, when asked about this, said, I don't think enough of the African or Latino yeah, there. Well, this is <laughs> disgusting. This is a disgrace, okay? He's an abomination. The richest mayor in history. And the, his riches go along with his morality. They're, they're inversely proportional.
And this is a very serious matter. I would not act be a trimmer like de Blasio. I want to end the emphasis. No, I want to end stop and frisk. It isn't used in St. Louis. Can it we? isn't used in Los Angeles. And the crime rate went down as much as in New York City. So it's a false statement, just as it's false to say that Wall Street yeah. would leave the city. You know, Tony is making great points, but uh, why should we give up any more time to Mr. de Blasio? <laughs> Let, let's talk about what we would do as opposed to what he would do. No, but I want to say... Uh, what, and, and that would mean, for instance, a controller could do something. John Liu, by the way, uh, we'll be positive about things, the controller right now, did some really, really remarkable things as controller. One of them was he produced a report three months ago that nobody has published anywhere, basically, about what the benefits of legalizing marijuana would be in New York City. Mm. And this has something to do with stop and frisk. He did the analysis, figures that about $400 million would be incoming every year from excise taxes on, on, on legalizing marijuana. But the other number is 50,000 arrests out of stop and frisk in New York City every year what does that cost to arrest somebody, literally? Uh, those 50,000 arrests were stop and frisk arrests related to marijuana possession only. And marijuana possession, as a matter of fact, is only illegal in New York City if you do it and use it in public. And so corruption there is that the police department is stopping and frisking, forcing these mostly uh, Men, young men of color, forcing them to empty their pockets, yeah, yeah, at yeah, which yeah, point yeah. The, the, the marijuana right. is in public and then they get arrested. Both 50,000 arrests. Yeah, they're not, they're the not city. stopping them for marijuana, they're stopping them for yes, no apparent but, reason yeah. and then finding marijuana. Right, but as a controller, I want to talk about the money because my job would be to, it, it, literally, it's the mission. The mission is to maintain the fiscal health of the city of Correct. New York. Now, how do you maintain the health? One of the ways you do is by bringing more money in, but the, one, the other way is by stopping city waste. City waste involved in stop and frisk and, and uh, this 50,000 marijuana arrest is huge. St and they the don't target the stopped. white neighborhoods. You can go to the Metropolitan Museum of Steps in the summer and see kids smoking marijuana. You can see cocaine. They never stopped. And if I stopped 100, if I stopped 1,000 people on the Upper East Side, guaranteed at least one of them would be carrying a gun because that's what the statistics were when the judge pointed this out you find a gun every that you stop people in neighborhoods that are not that are poor and african and latino and you find one person with a gun out of a thousand that to me you could find that in a white neighborhood as well the statistics used by bloomberg kelly regime are not statistically significant from the point of view of a researcher or a social scientist. Well, more often than not, they don't even give you statistics. They give you buzzwords uh, uh, that have nothing to do with math at all. They tell you that there's more crime in, in the community, in the, in, the, in the black and brown communities. That's why they stop and frisk, which is, which tells me nothing because it's a bunch of horse pucky. Uh, if you take Harlem itself, um, what what specific area are you talking about? Harlem is a very, it goes from 110th Street all the way to 155th Street from the east to the west. Uh, there's a lot of neighborhoods in Harlem where you cannot afford to live, where there's doctors and lawyers, so it's not like, you know, the whole community. Are you talking about a specific housing project? If you're talking about a specific area, that does not require 30,000 uh, police uh, stopping everybody that moves. And when you're talking about finding guns, how many people are dying? There are no numbers that are being given to augment what he's saying. It's just like fancy little words that he uses to, to incite fear in people. And uh, he does what he wants to. I don't, I don't think this has anything to do with uh, money. I don't think this has anything to do with crime. I think this has to do 
uh, with establishing a police state mm -hmm. so that you can then change the economics of New York in and of itself. They want to get rid of a poor community, especially a poor black community, because nothing looks poorer than a poor black because, you know, you got the color thing and you got the no money thing going, you know, right. and bring in and, and turn New York into uh, basically uh, Sun City, South Africa during the apartheid era. My name is James Lane and I'm running for public advocate of New York City and I'm running on the Green Party line. The role of the public advocate is to act as a watchdog for the interest of the residents of New York City uh, to provide, to make sure that all of the city agencies are providing the services and resources that they need to provide for all the residents of the city. I've had many reasons why I wanted to run. Uh, I thought about running four years ago but I felt I was a bit too young. So this year I decided to run for public advocate because I've seen too many services and too many resources taken away from the public without any community involvement in a lot of these decisions for the city government. It feels that the public advocate's office has been denied of certain resources and their budgets have been reduced. I'm running for office this time around because I've done a lot of work with activism, community activism, political activism in my past 25 years. Uh, especially in the last two years working with the Occupy Wall Street movement, I've, I've definitely seen a reduction of representation of the people. You're running for public advocate. Yes. And one of the most important things public advocates, uh, one of the most important responsibilities of the public advocate's office is to uh, Put people on certain committee, uh, mm -hmm. committees, uh, budget committees, exactly. and and uh, um, uh, do, what are your plans? Do you have uh, do you have specific people that you have in mind? Do you have uh, uh, are you what are you looking for to be most effective as a public advocate in the city of New York? Well, the first thing you know, I don't want to give like we said, Mr. De Blasio, any more time. But the <laughs> first thing that always affects me is is the fact that you know he's been our public advocate for four years mm -hmm. and here we are we're still talking about stop and frisk and that's something that should have been under his control under those four years not while he's running for mayor he starts bringing this up mm -hmm. it's like I'm gonna stop this it's like you should have stopped it when you're mayor mm -hmm. you're because the first thing about public advocate is you're monitoring all the activities that's going on with the city agencies. As far as uh, appointing people right now, I'm not going to go into that right now, mm. but I want to talk about like what the public advocate should be doing. Uh, well, what you, not so much yeah. specific names, but what you'll be looking for in the people that you appoint. Yeah, well mm. definitely. Well, like for example, we have crime, right? People just throw up crime as like an issue, but crime doesn't just appear. Crime is created from poverty and oppression. <laughs> stop and frisk creates the scenarios like t Tony mentioned before. When you're stopping people that are, you know, college students or whatever, but just because they're people of color, and you're stopping them and, and putting them into this trauma of stop and frisk, because I've been stopped and frisked many a times. Just coming home from work, you know, in, in Hell's Kitchen, <laughs> 49th Street, 9th Avenue, like 10, 15 cops jump out and push a bunch of us up against the wall running their fingers through my pockets saying you know make sure you don't have any needles or anything in your pockets I don't want to cut myself and asking me where I live and I'm like I live right across the street yeah. you know it's like prove it to me <laughs> and I'm like you're you know I'm thinking to myself you're the one that's like violating me yeah. and you want me to prove my existence <laughs> you know yeah. so it's just a weird thing so that that's a huge problem um, the, the police department is is Totally Bloomberg's army. He said that himself. He said it's his personal army. Uh, and, and I think a lot of this, you know, and I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist at all, but a lot of this affects people of color and the communities of color a lot. Um, it leads into these feelings of I'll never be able to advance. I'll never be able to get what's mine fairly in this, in this situation because there's all this oppression around me. And then, you know, kids that don't do well in school, say high school age or whatever, and they see there's really no future for them in college, they're going to turn to the military as like a solution because they're getting bombarded in their communities with military ads in the bodegas and the TV shows through the video games, you know, and they're going to join the military. Then if they get wounded in action, they come back 
home to the states, and there's no help for them again. And then they wind They're up closing up. public hospitals. Exactly, yeah. closing public hospitals. There's a couple of things you 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 alluded to. Um, um, uh, there has been data that has just been reported that um, the equitable distribution of funds, even even funds that are earmarked for um, uh, less well-to-do schools mm -hmm. have been going uh, dramatically toward to schools that uh, have upper middle class uh, exactly. students. Um, and when you talk about crime, um, there has been a tremendous resistance to even having an IG to look into some of the uh, uh, police practices as it pertains to people, even even just uh, supervision to, to find out what may or may not have occurred. Uh, how do you? How do? First of all, how do you get the public to understand that it is being railroaded? Right. Much less deal with the issue at hand of, of fighting those power brokers who want to keep this this in place because a lot of it is is the ignorance of the of the public yeah. in, 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 my, in my own experience running for controller this is the third time twice for new york state and now the audiences the forums that i do get invited to most of the time that's a public housing forum or an naacp forum and so forth but talking to the people they respond to numbers they really do mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, you know, the example of, of homelessness, for instance, in the city. <laughs> right now, or, or not right now, a couple of, couple of months ago it actually started, the mayor sued the controller because the controller objected to a contract. The contract was a $67 million contract being given to a private contractor to provide ho ho uh, homeless shelters on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Now, $67 million for shelters on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Right. And right. I'm quite sure none of that is going to the churches that really are supplying the beds right. in, in my neighborhood. Every church has, has half a dozen or a dozen beds every night. But anyway, that $67 million, when I talk to uh, a public housing group about that, they respond to that waste. They know that that's waste. They know that that's corruption. There's no way that that is a legitimate expense for providing housing uh, beds for, for the homeless. But the, the, the budget is totally rife with all of that. Right. Tony mentioned Barclays. Barclays, that's a British bank. Got correct, to build correct, a correct, got correct, to build a correct. stadium in Brooklyn in in in, in the downtown area that roughly destroyed the stadium. Tony talked about the fact that they didn't do the critical uh, quo that they were supposed yeah, to. No beds got, but but they got a three hundred million dollar subsidy because they were essentially handed MTA property. Now the MTA, by the way, right now is giving um, Citibank. Uh, a $112 million a year subsidy essentially because Citibank sold them a deal of that they would insure their variable bonds. So we were, anyway, the ultimate short story is every one of us is paying for that in raised fares right. and reduced bus service, etc. People respond to that when you tell them uh, when you name the names, let me you tell them who the villains are. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, right yeah, let me understand what you just said. Um, um, Citibank is getting a government subsidy well, to act as an insurer for <laughs> variable bonds. Is that what you said? <laughs> yes, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, that, maybe. yes, I did say that, and okay. yes, that is the fact of it. The problem, well, one of the problems is that it is, uh, the bank is insuring the interest rates of, of the bonds, that, that they were the sell, salesmen for the bonds. The, a bond is a loan, right? right the right. MTA needs a loan to buy uh, subway cars. And so it issues a bond. Now, once upon a time, those kinds of bonds were issued at, a, at a, a standard rate for a certain amount of time. But Citibank sells MTA on this brilliant idea. Instead of that, let's just say that you will sell the bond at a variable rate, which is uh, uh, some small percentage above a LIBOR. A LIBOR being this cooked right, up, London, you know, uh, yeah, right, into the interbank, interbank offering, yeah, rate, offering rate, you know, which is, right, in right. fact, Turns out to have been totally manipulated for them to make well, money. Well, it is up. manipulated, and, and yeah. it's only valid uh, uh, 
at the beginning of each day. So they right. set the rate so that they know how to make money. Right. You know, it's not even like a, a, a rate that's like, you know, okay, we'll set this rate and this rate is, is, at, is at in rate. place until yeah. we set another rate. It's like at the beginning of each stock day, they yeah. set this LIBOR rate, you know, that ensures that they turn the profit. Thank, thank you. That's a, that, that's a great explanation. And then so you get, get a bank advising the MTA, look, instead of issue a, a, a fixed rate bond, issue a variable rate bond, and don't worry about it, it you know, with this, oh, variable, suppose it, uh, suppose it goes up, you know, don't worry about it, we'll also sell you an insurance policy that if it goes above a certain point, you pay us the premium, and if it goes a above a certain point, we will um, make up the difference. And guess what happened? We had a crash. Interest rates are down to next to nothing. Right. And guess who is paying the insurance company that was assure, insuring them that they're getting all the difference between the crashed rate and the uh, thing. So right. it's it just, it right. just essentially right. a gigantic right. scam. Perpetrated, <laughs> but it perpetrated on, on, on the people of New York. And, and several people have said to me, well, maybe, maybe the poor, <laughs> yeah, right, MTA didn't have experts expert enough to understand this, and the banks just uh, tricked them. Right. Oh, please. Have we got a load up? We've got an MTA guy on the Republican side. Right. <laughs> and let's talk about Sandy. Let's okay. talk about okay. Sandy. Okay. okay. Okay, 2012. The mayor's been in office for a dozen years, right? right? Christie declares a state of emergency on a Friday, mm -hmm. Cuomo on a Saturday. Nothing, not a word from Bloomberg. The storm hit on the Monday. So I go to the mayor's guard, a Sergeant Boyle, a new guy who was there that particular day, and I said, when's the mayor going to make a statement? When is he going to talk? This was Sunday morning, late Sunday morning. Well, he got on and started talking an hour later. He was absolutely clueless as he was with the snowstorms. So what I would do as mayor, I would have people evacuate immediately because we knew that this was going to be a certainty. And the casualties suffered in New York City as a result of the storm, 42 people, are greater than the casualties suffered in India in the recent typhoon at 17, where they used the army, I would use the National Guard, mm -hmm. and evacuate people. I would use the police department to help people. He did nothing until it was too late. He had guys on the, M and the MTA, they had guys nailing up plywood in the Wall Street stations. And the Bowling Green Station was entirely flooded. That's, it was idiotic. And they knew about this a dozen years ago. We had Bob. And the reaction of the mayor was, I'm going to hold a marathon a week later. And guess who said, that's a great idea, Mayor. John Liu and Bill de Blasio. It took them a, a couple of days and their advisors to tell them, hey, not a smart move. Not a smart move, guys. Okay, there's still people suffering. There's still people out of homes as we speak. They have closed the R train for 14 months, the subway line that runs between um, Manhattan and, and Brooklyn. This costs tens of billions of dollars. And they don't care. They take the money and run. That's all their attitude is. And Bloomberg is the arch carpetbagger. He can come here and make $27 billion, and he's going off to London. So yes, I do want to point the finger at the Democrats and Republicans. They were not prepared at all for a storms that are coming, that have come. We had Bob, it was knee deep in South Sea Seaport. This time it was head deep, and, and they did nothing. And the most important thing and is, was the public too, advocate. Is, is that this last hurricane, it didn't have the amount of rain that I was expecting. Mm. My wife always laughs at me whenever a big storm is coming because I'm like preparing for zombies to take over. I'm like tying things up in the backyard, <laughs> doing this, and like make sure our this is clear. I'm putting conchos up over everything. You know, it's like you're going crazy. I'm like, I'm I'm preparing because because as greens, we're very in touch with the environment, and we know there's certain levels of the city that are are pretty much going to be affected just by global warming. So whenever we're preparing for storms, we're looking at, well, in 10 or 20 years, this is probably going to be the norm. So we're going to prepare for this now. And, and New York City is the eighth most vulnerable city in, in the United States. Exactly. We're right there on the coast. You know, and for anybody to think that you know, a storm coming our way is just something that you say, like, oh, it'd be all right. You know, and a week later, we're going to have a marathon. It'll be nice. <laughs> and it's just clueless. And I just feel that our current elected officials I don't know if it's a, an issue of pride or laziness or stupidity,
but they will not do the extra step to reach out to a professional, to, you know, someone outside of the norm. Who might contradict their political cronyism. Exactly. The relationship of de Blasio to the mayor, of Lou to the mayor, when it came to Sandy. Certainly that was the case. Right. Well, the, the, the proximity to the mayor is, is secondary to um, their proximity to what the mayor represents. And the mayor represents uh, Wall Street interest. It represents uh, giant real estate interest. It, it, actually, it, 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 it represents global corporate interest right. uh, on every level. Um, and that's why, even more, I say you need a strong public advocate. Because everyone in the media says the public advocate office, it's really a powerless entity. It's, you know, under uh, budget. Uh, well, I know you don't because yeah. you're in the good media. <laughs> that's because the previous public the advocate... stupid ass question. The previous, public, the previous public advocates didn't advocate. They exactly. didn't do their job, yeah. damn it. They yeah. didn't do their exactly. job. And, you know, like the original public advocate, it was like what president of the city council was the title before. Right. And then they changed right. it over to public advocate. And like you said, right. they don't do what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to advocate for the public. Correct. If, if Bloomberg comes out and he's like, I want to ban Correct. large sodas, that's his initiative. That's not the public's initiative. Right. So mm -hmm. that's what the public advocate should be doing. So all of these issues that are coming up, stop, like I said before, stop and frisk. That's not something that happened overnight. Forget about stop and frisk. What about shoot and kill? Are yeah. people of color getting yeah. shot and killed, yeah. going into yeah. their houses late yeah. at night, pulling out a wallet? Yeah. I mean, like, these are issues that many public advocates should have addressed before mm. now it's like this campaign thing you know mm. it's a club mm. it's a private club of these guys who have put the public at risk on every level whether it comes to the environment or finance or education they pointing a mayor appointing a chancellor kathy black who lives a half a block from ps6 who sends her kids to her school a private school in connecticut PS6 is one of the best schools in the city. I went there, my daughter went there, and she had no experience in education. Yeah. And we Greens got, you know, applied for her job. We figured if she can run the school system, we can run her corporation. Mm. I mean, it's just an insult to the people of this city. There's, there's, oh. there's been a major, there's been a major um, focus on privatizing anything and everything as it relates to the public. They want to privatize the prison system. Ultimately, they want to privatize the police system. They want to privatize the hospitals. They want to privatize the schools, which is, charter schools is like the first step to that. Um, um, to destroy the unions. Yeah. Right. Well, yes, 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 yes. Well, if you privatize and you give everybody $8 an hour, I'm you union don't union need man. unions. As a matter of fact, yes. they've, they've, they've done a very good job at uh, destroying yeah. union, down unions. Down Union is down to nothing. Down to 7%. Right. 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 KWU can do a better job I, running transit system. I would like to make a, system. A, a put in a plug for, for a wonderful email list that I have come across called oh, the Privatization Watch. And mm -hmm. every day they send you a list, and it comes out every single day, of various stories around the country of what's been privatized and how it's doing. So this morning's list had seven things, three toll roads <laughs> <laughs> that, are, that are bankrupt now, <laughs> um, a couple of housing things that the number of things being privatized and the idea that the city of New York just calmly had now and, and they increased it two more two hundred more charter schools are going to happen in the next four years mm. because they just got approved but those for-profit two hundred two hundred more yes that's that's uh, we the state of New York education system could not have gotten its race to the top of uh, federal funds if the, the state legislature did not uh, did not approve, they had a cap on the charter schools. It, they had to approve 200 more charter schools because Obama and uh, what's his name, Don, Arne, Arne Duncan, Arne uh, Duncan, Arne, right. Arne Duncan wanted their supporting privatization of the educate the whole ed education system. So they put into national legislation: if you want your federal funds, you have to approve private schools and uh, charter schools. And New York State had a 200 cap on the number of charter schools that could be approved. It's just been a it was switched to 400. There are, there are literally thousands upon thousands of charter schools uh, all over the nation, yes. and they're predominantly for uh, black and brown. 
uh, uh, children. Listen. Should we be the smartest? Uh, should we be the <laughs> smartest race Listen. of people on in the galaxy? <laughs> let, me, let me tell you an yeah. let me tell you an anecdote directly connected to the school system. <laughs> For a year, I worked for the American History Social Project at City University, and I went around to the schools. I went around to Wingate High School in Brooklyn. This is 10 years ago, just at the beginning of uh, Bloomberg's awful three terms. And I saw an art class, and the mm. teacher was doing wonderful work. And I said, how do you get the students to do this great work in your classroom? She says, I buy the... I go out and buy the materials. Right. This was before any charter schools were here. They starved the system. After they starved the system and had huge class sizes, then they say, oh, the school system isn't working. The students aren't learning. It's not learning because they're not spending per capita on the student what a private school, like Trinity, for instance, spends on their pupils. Why do they do well? They have small class size. Ca class size is a cap to 20. So is Dalton, when Bloomberg sent his children. But that's not the case in the public schools. They, he stripped there. music, he stripped, stripped art, he stripped phys ed. This is an absolute criminal activity that he was engaged in in the dozens of years against the public, against the general welfare, against the Constitution, whose first sentence says, we have to uphold the general welfare. He supports private welfare. He has scrapped the Constitution with stop and frisk, multiple violations of the Constitution and its amendments. So the man is an outlaw in terms of the law as it is written and as the Bill of Rights demonstrates. No, I think he's, uh, yeah. I think he's, I think he thinks of himself as a king, you know, God yeah. made me king. Lloyd Black, Lloyd Black, Lloyd Black, Lloyd Black, I'm doing God God's me. work. Right. Back I'm to doing numbers God's and, work. And, and another real example, numbers. The charter schools in New York City mm -hmm. are being housed in public schools. They're being right. housed in right. public schools, right. rent free. Right. Yeah, so uh, that includes the for-profit ones. Right. The kind of thing that happens is a close friend of mine, science teacher at Brandeis High School, retired. We run into some teacher she worked, worked with when she was working recently and asked how things are going and she said, well, they, our charter school took over the third floor of the school. And uh, my science teacher friend says, what? The third floor of the school? But that's where the science labs are. Right. And he said, that's right. So now the public school, high school students at Brandeis must go out a, pro a special entrance and up a special flight of stairs reserved, i.e. Seg segregated for them so that they don't, uh, uh, to get to a science lab, they're, they're in a segregated part of public school, the rest of it is... That sounds precisely like what provoked the Columbia Rebellion. I went to Columbia University in the 1960s, and they were planning to build a gymnasium in Morningside Park next to the cliffs, and the Columbia white students would go in the top, and they were going to provide some space for the Harlem community, and they went into another entrance on the bottom. This is precisely the architectonal, architectural model they're using. And we've got to put a stop to this, the citizens of New York. New York City is my living room, my laboratory, my life. And I will not stand for it to be run into the ground by somebody of the low moral caliber of the current mayor and his successor who claims that he's going to provide affordable housing and then approves this Barclays Center's project. And nothing has been built as we speak here. Is it true that we don't have money for arts and, and uh, you know, because the same, the same elitists who tell us that there is no money for the arts seem to spend a large portion of their time at the opera. They, I mean, uh, uh, they support, I mean, they could not live without Shakespeare and Michelangelo and, 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 and Beethoven, you know, so they obviously understand the importance of the arts and they even understand the, the um, elitist educational background that, that, that art, uh, you know, imbues upon people. 
Um, um, is it true we, we, we don't have money for music programs and we don't have money? Is because that, they're not that, being that, attacked. That, I mean, yeah, he's it, interested it, it, in wait, whoa, promoting wait. dead art. He's not encouraging <laughs> live students working cool. on creative activity. No call it. No call it. This gets me angry. Good, I've been 45, good, years, this, this I've been in 45 <laughs> years in education <laughs> uh, and it's the worst system uh, that they've put yeah. together in the last five years. He and his, his, his henchmen on the educational system. Right. Destroying the educational system. But doing in, in February, I went to the place where Re Rebel Diaz had been evicted violently by the New York City Police Department. Okay? We went there and they performed a concert. They were doing wonderful artwork, wonderful graf graffiti of murals. They would call it graffiti, but it's murals, wonderful right, right, murals, right, right, wonderful right. artwork. Right. doing a lot of music performance, right. they went I'm in sure there and destroyed Picasso, them because uh, they, they <laughs> couldn't control them, okay? They were doing people's art. Yeah. And I'm for art for the people and yeah. I'm for the people. I'm not for this kind of... I would use the police department to support the public, not to support the private sector. Okay, start some trouble about money, yeah. about numbers. <laughs> okay, the money yeah, 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 I'm the money person. So, so there it is. So if you hand Barclays Three hundred million dollars, which is what they did when they gave them that land, right. as opposed to using the land or selling the land for a useful purpose, you have depleted the treasury by three. What does three hundred million dollars buy? It's yours. Heck, buys a, a what? A six hundred? Six hundred? No, six thousand teachers, for instance, including art teachers, to to put that money in education. They, didn't they, they mean, tell you that, that that we would have? All of these people who would be able to sell hot dogs year round. And, I mean, no, I'm not. At, at a living wage. Right. Exactly. 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 Tens of thousands of sports fans are going to come in by car from Jersey. Right. What exactly does that, or how much pollution is coming in with them? How much land has to be taken up to supply them with a place to put their car? When you think about, those are never built into the costs. But those costs, health-wise, it costs the city something if, 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 if kids have asthma, if people are, are breathing polluted air. Land masts to take care of those cars that are coming in from, and, and remember, if Bloomberg had gotten his way, we would also, we'd also, and they're in the middle of doing one out in Millage Point, and we got this, the same thing up, up in the Bronx. Every one of those destructive uh, subsidies for major corporations, essentially, are destructive to the population, destructive to the, the social climate, and, that, and there are costs associated with every one of those things. But in general, uh, I personally don't have the, the financial acumen to, in fact, decide exactly how much the cost is. Mm -hmm. But the Comptroller's Office has 700 uh, <coughs> accountants, et cetera, who could right, do the right, research right, for, right. for us. And right. then if, you were, if we had that kind of research being done, would the public stand for it? You can't expect them to think through these things, and they don't know what's going to happen. Like Is there an agency or two that you would audit? Um, 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 would I audit um, a particular? Well, actually, the, the controller, uh, the controller theoretically audits all agencies all the time. Right. For, yeah. But the audits that they do are, are they doing are there, what they said there, they were going to do? Are there a couple of agencies that make you raise an eyebrow uh, as opposed to... City uh, Time didn't raise an eyebrow for Thompson. He kept approving every... Yeah, increase no, from that, 70 million that, to 700 million. A, that, but that was a private contract. That wasn't an agency. Remember? No, but I'm saying he pr yeah. proved. He so passed that on. It. The, the controller again didn't do his job. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, and, and this is why you need the public advocate the to do the job. Right, right. Yeah. And, the the right. and the mayor to enforce this. And the mayor to enforce this. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Fire stations and they're and they're closing uh, uh, things that we. Uh, so this thing think of is right. vital to community. Right. And giving a half a billion tax dollars to Yankee Stadium. Mm. So that a lot of white people who right. can take the number four train, you never see white people north of 125th right. Street pack right. the trains whenever there's a Yankee right. game because the people in the Bronx can't afford it. They can't afford the restaurants there. And their park was destroyed and their park still hasn't mm. been rebuilt. And a half a billion dollars of taxpayer money Incidentally, went to that enterprise. There's a little detail about that, that the parks and, and the collusion between 
the the state legislature and the party the the the, the city local local legislature is works brilliantly there or or not works for, it works for them and it works for the duopoly that's running everything by state law you cannot alienate part meaning you cannot take parkland and use it for something else that's what the term uh, the technical term right, is alienate right. you cannot alienate parkland without legislative approval at the state level so how did they get to take the new york well, city parkland yes but, the but the point is they didn't uh, as far as exactly. i know they didn't even go to the go to the legislature and get the approval right. it means right. that the legislature right. has to literally pass a law and say right. okay you can do that it's a clear you know. example of people falling asleep on the job yes and so there's a public advocate that would do something right. and a public advocate and a controller and a mayor working together uh, and what what a concept <laughs> <laughs> explain something to me because there are certain things i hear um um over and over and over and i'm not quite sure what exactly they mean and and um, as, um uh, in addition to um, the closing of fire, st fire stations mm -hmm. and hospitals, there's been a number of school closings. Exactly. And they always say the same thing, we are closing failing schools. And I'm trying to figure out how can a school fail? A school is a building. When it starves, uh, right, just like right, a human right. being starves but, to death. But people can fail. Right. You're right. And You're if people right. fail, you bring in new people. Mm -hmm. But they say the school failed, but the school is a building. Right. Precisely. You know, Precisely. You know, Precisely. A building can't fail. <laughs> Only right. the people in the building right. can fail. So you change the way you uh, conduct business in that building. You don't close the building. I don't understand. You know, there's something that just does not compute. Well, it Maybe. doesn't. It's not logical okay. because it isn't logical. Right. It's self-serving and mercenary. And they don't care about the public at all. We have to put the public interest first, not the private interest first. That's what the Greens are about. Yeah. We have to put where people live, their environment first, their health and safety. That's not been done, but because the economy is failing and falling apart after the 2008 collapse, they, when it was flourishing, Robert Moses working for, for the Rockefellers built the Cross Bronx Expressway, so that's why there's so much asthma in the South Bronx. He didn't give a damn about the neighborhood. He, that's, it was all about highways. It was all about gasoline, oil companies, and cars, and promoting this lifestyle, and destroying the light rail and the rail system that we had in this country, and starving it, as Amtrak was, mm -hmm. to make a profit so that they can then have wars for oil and make us dependent on this carcinogen. That's what it is. It's a carcinogen instead of converting to solar, wind, and wave, as other countries are doing. G Germany is getting rid of nuclear, and nuclear, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's forever but, nuclear know, back waste. Back to the school question. Well, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You go first. Yeah. Um, it's such an obvious but never said point that you just made. Mm. The school can't fail, but, the, but what is actually happening in New York City with those closing of schools essentially is is that property mm -hmm. uh, wanted by uh, the one percent for some reason mm -hmm. and they do right. the most amazing they just did well actually that one they, they didn't get away with it but literally the Department of Education offered oh, I think they, they yeah they put out a request for proposals for two schools on West End Avenue in the 70s. Now you can't get much higher higher end nowadays than West End Avenue in the 70s. Right. There's two public schools that were, were built in the 60s, so they're not old and out of date or anything like that. They offered them to developers. And, and, and what would happen was the developers were to say, yes, I'll take it, then demolish the building, put up luxury housing, mm. and uh, have some space in the building for a school. Right. Now, if you could believe that, uh, talk about hubris, that they actually would try that one, especially on that neighborhood. That neighborhood is now full of white, rich people mm -hmm. who send their kids to those schools. Mm -hmm. So they actually, I, I went to some of the... the, the so the schools are better. Uh, they no, made it better. Yeah, so no, 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 they didn't I'm make just, it better. I'm yes, you're right about yeah. that piece of it. Um, it. It works that way. But because... Those, those are not parents working three jobs and, right, and right, having right, nobody right. so that they can't go to meetings. They went and raised holy hell. Right. And suddenly the Department of Education, by the way, the, the, the board, it used to be the Board of Education. 
for time immemorial, Mr. Bloomberg changed it to a Department of Education. Right, I presume right, for, right. Uh, for purposes of making it more efficient and more management driven, no. right? No. That's what you want. Well, it's, it's been to destroy so public, public education and destroy things, public yeah. schools. Yeah, that's exactly well, what I'm saying. It's to destroy unions, public unions. Right. And destroy it's public it's unions. It's interesting yeah. that the same, the, the, the <laughs> same God controls the education system and the police department right. as it relates to stop and frisk. And all of his attention is on stop and frisk, and very little of it is on education. Uh, but yes. I'm going to ask a question that sure. I should have, uh, and, and I'm, I want you to remember that and then come back to yeah, your point. Definitely. But I want to ask a question before I forget uh, that I should have probably asked when we first started. Are all independent parties created equal? I mean... Uh, uh, because people see names, people really don't know the specifics of a party. They don't know really what you represent, mm. but they know catchy names. Um, is the Green Party uh, just like the Working Families Party, or uh, you know, what's Better. the difference? And we only got a couple of minutes <laughs> no, no. left. Oh, can, so. I, can I answer that one? Yeah, so yeah. I, we only got a couple I, I of minutes left. In, so I, I was around in the, the founding of the Working Families Party because it was founded by Citizens uh, Action and DSA, Democratic Socialists of America, which I was, and still am a socialist. Uh, no, Working Families Party is, was created by Democrat Socialists to pull the Democratic Party left by running. Democratic, uh, supporting Democratic candidates. So it's not truly an independent supporting party. Supporting Democratic candidates. Exactly. And if you ever Democratic, look at Democratic, like Democratic Party? Well, yes, like Democratic okay. Party, right, you'll right, ne almost never see any a candidate on their line that isn't a dem uh, also running on the Democratic Party. That's probably which way, 95% yeah. of the time. So, so but to, to talk about the Green Party, the Green Party, the first Green Parties were founded in the 70s in Australia and then in uh, New Zealand and then in Germany. And there are 80 Green Parties around the world. We're part of a, okay. a global Green movement and party. Um, we all operate on the same set of key values. We don't all do the same things all the time, that's mm. for sure. And, and sometimes some do some things that we don't, the rest of us don't like and we, we complain about it. There are 11 Green Parties in the Americas. I, by the way, was the, the president of the Federation of the Green Parties of the Americas for six years. So We've got to wind this up. I want each of you to um, um, say again your name, the office that you're running for, and I encourage everybody to vote. Everybody, get out and vote. You're voting for your life. Tony Grinovich, running for mayor on the Green Party, a tale of two cities, deserves a third party. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that. I'm James Lane. I'm the Green Party candidate for public advocate. And I'm your independent candidate that should be in office to monitor whoever is going to win. If it's Loda or de Blasio, you need an independent force in there to make sure they're doing the right thing for the people. And I'm Julia Willibrand, running for New York City Comptroller. And we absolutely need in this city somebody to pay attention to the finances. I want to thank you so much for uh, tuning in, joining us today. I am so impressed with not just the intelligence of the Green Party, but the specificity of their answers. Uh, however you vote, decide to vote, vote. Vote your interest. We are in very, very trying times, and your vote can mean the difference for you, your family, your community, your country, and the world. So get out and vote, and uh, vote your interest. You know, not your uh, personalities. You're not voting for the Oscars. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today, and. Uh,